We're hearing from one of the jurors who found Whitey Bulger guilty of 11 murders. The 83-year-old former mob boss will be sentenced in November. The juror Scott Hadicke spoke to our Boston station WBZ. He said the discussions often got heated during the five days of deliberations. Well, he was going to jail to the end of the universe. Basically, in my opinion, that's what I said, and people shouted at me like I was a nut. You're emotional. I'm like, I'm not emotional. I saw the trial. I felt he was guilty. You can't say he's guilty for like two days. It's like, what do you mean I can't? I don't think you know what you're talking about. I have the right to say that he's guilty. Like, look at this stuff that he did. CBS News analyst Ricky Kleeman has been following the trial since day one. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so what does this verdict mean for all the people involved, defense, prosecution, city, everybody? The real meaning is healing, I think, for the city of Boston. We look at victims, we look at the families of victims, and one of the things that we have to remember is this was a city that was injured. It was a collective, but not only injured by Whitey Bulger, the gangster who ran this reign of terror, but really injured by its government. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we take away is good. Someone who was out on the lam for 16 years, brought to justice, brought now to say he will never see the light of day, but we also got to expose this government corruption, uh, corruption at a level that is staggering. There's no doubt he was a character for all that he did, and no doubt he was a vicious murderer. Um, but as you point out, this was also a lot about uh, the FBI and their actions as well, which uh, raised a lot of questions about what they were doing for decades with this association with Whitey Bulger. The FBI uh, had its worst era, I yeah. think, of corruption during the decades that involved Bulger and Bulger's predecessor, Stevie Fleming. That what we saw was an FBI that not only was involved with crime, but facilitated, encouraged these people, and actually pointed out people to hit or kill. That should never happen again. And one of the things that's interesting about the families and their appreciation of these appointed defense lawyers is that the defense lawyers through cross-examination they're the ones who brought out the corruption and I very rarely share a direct quote with you but I think it's worth sharing today that the defense says from Hank Brennan Jay and I are encouraged that this government's corruption and cover-up has been exposed but this is just the tip of the iceberg the victims families and citizens deserve a congressional inquiry mm -hmm. and insistence on government accountability so what does the FBI say they say something like well a couple of bad apples but we're you know it's a very rare exception yes that's what they said and what the argument has been by many many people who have followed this trial and its saga is that this was endemic this was not a couple of bad apples what did the defense in reality expect to get out of this trial I think the defense is quite satisfied bizarrely uh, with what happened here they were they uh, agreed that there was extortion there was drug dealing there was money laundering the only things contested really were the murders and particularly of the two women one there was a finding of proven one no finding at all but ultimately the Department of Justice, through this U.S. Attorney's Office, is the victor. This is some saga. I've lived through it in that town <laughs> since the 70s. Yeah. It is good that it has come to a close. Ricky Kleeman, good. Thank you very much.